Deb, and this is Kristen. Hi. And today we're going to be making a paperback upscale pumpkin. Um, first of all, what you're going to need, you're going to need your glue or your Mod Podge. You're going to need your paints. You're going to need wire. You're going to need burlap, which comes in all different kinds of textures, and you can buy this anywhere. And you're going to need paperback books. The first thing you're going to look for is a good paperback book that when you bend it and pull it into a circle, that it doesn't fall apart. You do not want this book. So here we have a good book. What you're going to do is take your book, you're going to bend it, and if it stays, it's a good book. So the first thing you're going to do, you're going to tear off the cover, leave all the spine that you can on it, and the next step there is Kristen's going to show you, you're going to take your knife, your safety knife, safety first, you're going to open it, you're going to draw here, here, and just here. You leave everything else attached. So the first thing she's going to do is you need one of these, the safety knife. The reason you need the safety knife is because to go to the very, very thick um, spine. It's glued. So after she cuts a little bit, you're going to tear it away a little bit at a time. And it just, it takes a little bit of time. You're going to keep tearing that. Once you have that all done, your next project is going to be this. Now you can actually cut this with a knife or you can cut it with a pair of scissors. I have found on the ends it's much easier to do with a pair of scissors. So we're going to take the knife and we're going to set it up here. And then all she's going to do is cut and you're just going to keep cutting. You're going to lift these up and you're just going to keep cutting. And it doesn't matter if it's perfect, doesn't have to be perfect, no pumpkin is perfect. So once you basically get this cut, the top, you're going to switch down to the bottom. And I know it doesn't look like much yet, but it, it will. You can either go straight, angle, so now we have the finished pumpkin. So what we're going to do, we're going to take and we're going to play with your book, make it kind of bend. You're going to play with your pages and make it kind of bend. The little fuzzies on top, don't worry about it, you can trim those off with a pair of scissors. So now what we're going to do, we're going to lay the pumpkin flat and with the glue gun that we've already preheated, safety first, always use a mat because it will burn through the table. You're just going to gob tons and tons of glue. Now, please remember this is hot. It's hot. It will burn. Just hold your pages together for a few minutes. And if your pages rip, no big deal. No big deal. You're just kind of working your book into a circle Why this glue is hot. And remember, it's hot comes out the bottom, that's fine. You see your pumpkin is unfolding. And here we'll show you the pages have kind of popped, no big deal. A little bit of glue, take a couple pages, rarely tap it, little glue shut. And you can continue to do that and the more your pumpkin sets, the more it will open up. Don't, don't worry about it. It will slowly, the pages will slowly form. There you have the start of your pumpkin. The next step is to your dies. You're going to ink it up. You're going to make your pumpkin look really, really old. You can use shoe polish, which is wonderful, cheap. Who doesn't have shoe polish? Stamp pads. And you're just going to ink it. You're going to make it look old. On the edges, right? Yep. Yep. On the okay. edges. Edges, the top, inside pages. How you normally do it. Yep. 
just like that. Mm -hmm. just take it gob it on there just just gob it on pretty much making it look rustic right yep you're making it look old dirty one of those dirty books that you never knew what to do with that you always threw away yep open the pages you go over the colors you start using greens browns reds there's no right or wrong here I have just some old old wax dyes. They're great. Once you get they're kind of ecky and dirty. Once you get this all done, tell however you like it. I mean there's like I said, there's no right or wrong. You can go over with browns, greens, reds. basically have your old looking pumpkin. The next step is you need leaves. Here we have our burlap. Burlap, if you paint it, let it dry. When you cut it, it will not unravel because if you try cutting burlap, it's going to ravel. It's going to look like this. So we have some leaves that I just photocopied. Kristen is just going to real quick cut that out. And all I did was paint that burlap with some cheap paints that I picked up. And it doesn't have to be perfect. That's the main thing. Every room, remember, you can use and use fake leaves. You can use real leaves. And I usually put two on. Here I have a brown one, and she's cutting out a green one. No time at all. And then you need tree branch limb. Just go out there, cut one with a piece of wood, cut a tree branch up, fallen limb, and you're gonna gob, just gob the top of your pumpkin with glue. Okay, wrong end, that one wasn't level. Set it in there, it will harden, it will dry. Another glue stick. And then I'll have you just place that real close to the, you just place it anywhere, just real close in there. And see, she cut this out really quick. No right or wrong. And again, glue's going to be hot if you're not careful. <laughs> I think that's the hardest part, isn't it? Yeah, it's a little like tricky this. sometimes. How do you clean it? Okay, the next thing is we're going to add... The little wire to it. You can use wire, you can use, um, I have used grapevine. You can spray paint your wire if you want a different color. I use very bendable wire in the craft section. And you have those little glue thingies. To make the stem, just take it around your finger, make a curly cue. That's all there is to it. No glue needed, and just slide it over the top. And you do the same thing for the other side. I always like to put two. You can put as many as you want on there. You can play with it. You can make them as long as you want. And you have your paperback pumpkin. Hi, my name's Skyler, and I'm here to tell you a little bit about our video games we have here at the library. Uh, we have quite a few selection of the PlayStation 2 games. Uh, we have some computer games in here, and a few Xbox games, the original ones. And But our most modern and impressive uh, collection of video games is our ever-growing PlayStation 3 games. Uh, here in the teen room, anyone from the ages of 12 to 18 can come in here and play PlayStation 2 and PlayStation 3 games uh, Mondays. Wednesdays, Fridays from 3 to about 7.30, and then pretty much all day Saturdays when we're open, 10 to 5. And uh, any of our video games can be checked out. Uh, right now, you can only check out one video game uh, per card, and they go out for about a week, and they can't be renewed also. And in the children's area, for the younger kids who like to play video games, we have a Wii that we just hooked up yesterday. So any of the younger kids who like to come in and play Wii games can uh, go in the kids' area and play the Wii in there. 
and we do have a few more computer games up at the front desk. Those have, uh, but those are kind of mixed in with our computer programs and items. But these are really our video game selection here. And as you can see, we are running out of room. Uh, and once we get done processing our new batch of PlayStation 3 games, of which includes Transformers, War for Cybertron, oh, what else? Uh, we have more LEGO games coming in, and we have pretty much uh, a wide variety of different video games to uh, fit anyone's play style or preference in here. Uh, if you ever have any questions about the video games, please feel free to ask anyone here. Uh, I pretty much know more about uh, video games than anyone else at this library. So if you have any questions about ratings or uh, content, what we have, if you'd like me to fill out a form, or not a form, but a request to uh, uh, get a new video game here in the library, please just let me know and I will uh, hop to it as soon as I can. For story time. Now it's time for story We're time. We're ready for story time, everybody. Story Yay! Time. Sing our song, Miss Nancy. Okay. Now it's time for now, story time. The more no, we get to no, oh no, 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 Goldie, what do you want to sing? Ah, now it's time for story time. Story time, story time. Story now time. it's time for story time. Ah, I woo, know. Goldie. I have a story for us today, Goldie. Yeah. And it's called the little old lady who wasn't afraid of anything. Well, I'm glad she's not, because I don't particularly like spiders. You don't like spiders? I don't like spiders. Spiders are good. They eat bugs. I don't like spiders. OK. Well, I'll keep them away from you then. I promise. OK. There was an old lady, the little old lady who was afraid of nothing by Linda Williams. Once upon a time, there was a little old lady who was not afraid of anything. One windy afternoon, the little old lady left her cottage and went for a walk in the forest to collect herbs and spices and nuts and seeds. She walked so long and so far that it started to get dark. There was only a silver of the moon, a little part of it shining through the night. The little old lady started to walk home. Suddenly she stopped. Right in the middle of the path were two big shoes. And the shoes went clomp, clomp. Get out of my way, you two big shoes. I'm not afraid of you, said the little old lady. On she walked down the path. But behind her, she could hear clomp, 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 clomp. clomp, clomp. A little further on, the little old lady stumbled into a pair of pants. And the pants went wiggle, wiggle. Get out of my way, you pair of pants. I'm not afraid of you, said the little old lady, and she walked on. But behind her, she could hear two shoes go clomp, clomp, and one pair of pants go wiggle, wiggle. Further still, the little old lady bumped into a shirt, and the shirt went shake, shake. Get out of my way, you silly shirt. I'm not afraid of you, said the little old lady. And on she walked, a little bit faster, though. But behind her, she could hear two shoes go clomp, clomp, and one pair of pants go wiggle, wiggle, and one shirt go shake, shake. A little way on, the little old lady came upon two white gloves. Get out of my way, she said to the two white gloves and the tall black hat. And the gloves went clap, clap, and the hat went nod, nod. Get out of my way, you two white gloves and you tall black hat, 
I'm not afraid of you, she said. And on she walked, just a little bit faster. But behind her, she could hear two shoes going clomp, clomp, one pair of pants go wiggle, wiggle, one shirt going shake, shake, and two gloves going clap, clap, and one hat going nod, nod. By now, the little old lady was walking at a quite a fast pace. She was very near her cottage when she was startled by a very huge, very orange, very scary pumpkin. And the head went... Boo! <gasps> Boo! This time, the little old lady did not stop to talk. She did not stop at all. She ran. But behind her, she could hear clomp, 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 two shoes, one pair of pants go wiggle, wiggle, one shirt go shake, shake, two gloves go clap, clap, one hat go nod, nod, and one scary pumpkin head going boo. boo. Oh, no. The little old lady did not look back. She ran as fast as she could and didn't stop to catch her breath until she was safe inside her cottage with the door locked. She sat in her chair by the fire and she rocked and she rocked. It was so quiet in her cottage before the knock knock on the door. <gasps> Should she answer it? Hmm. Well, she was not afraid of anything. So she went to the door and she opened it. What do you think she saw? Ooh. Two shoes go clomp, clomp. One pair of pants go wiggle, wiggle. One shirt goes shake, shake. Two gloves go clap, clap. One hat goes nod, nod and one scary yeah. pumpkin head going boo. <gasps> I'm not afraid of you, said the little old lady bravely. What do you want anyway? We've come to scare you. Um, uh, you can't scare me. <laughs> That's then, then what's to become of us, said the pumpkin head, suddenly looking very unhappy. Hmm. I have an idea, said the little old lady, and she whispered something in the pumpkin's ear. Ooh, okay. The pumpkin head nodded, and its face seemed to brighten a little bit. The little old lady said, good night, and she closed the door and whistled her way to bed. The next morning she woke up early. She went to her window and she looked out into her garden. And what do you think she saw? <gasps> Two shoes go clomp, clomp. One pair of pants go wiggle, wiggle. One shirt goes shake, shake. Two gloves go clap, clap. One hat goes nod, nod. And one scary pumpkin head goes boo, and she scared it scared all the crows away. The end. Did you like that? Do you have you ever guys ever seen a scarecrow? Yes. Yes. Does do you have one out in the country where you live? <gasps> no. <laughs> what is that? <laughs> I don't think I like spiders too much. Spider, I know it is a bug. A, a big Hi Goldie. How are you? Hello, Nancy. How are you doing? Did you see what's sitting beside you? No, I just came up the stairs here. Oh, okay. Well you should probably look at what's sitting beside you. It's one of your favorite things. Go Goldie. Go Goldie. 
Goldie, are you okay? You put that there on purpose, didn't you? No, no, I didn't. Did I put the Did I put the spider there on purpose, my you guys? My feathers all ruffled. Oh, I'm I'm sorry, Goldie. I didn't mean to do that. It was an accident. No, I won't lay any eggs. Oh well. For a long time. Okay. Well, I think we have another story to read. Would you? Would you uh, this, maybe? This, I think this is a fractured fairy tale. It is a fractured fairy tale. Yes, Boy, it is. If we only had the music for a fractured fairy tale, that I would know. be perfect. And I need to find. I need to find Slurping Beauty. Do you have her? Uh, just a minute. Okay. Do you guys like Goldie? Sometimes I try to catch her, but she runs really fast. Oh, oh, oh. Miss Nancy. Yes. Oh, here I am. Oh. Thank you you're very welcome. much. I appreciate that. You're welcome. Oh, she's so beautiful. Well, we're going to read a, a, a fractured fla fairy tale based on Sleeping Beauty. Sleeping Beauty. I do have a Sleeping Beauty. I know a lot of people. You do? Yeah, well, this is Sleeping Beauty. And it's uh, called Slurping Beauty. Well. Are we all ready, guys? <laughs> Once upon a time, there lived a king in a faraway land. He had one daughter, a lovely young princess. He decided to throw her a feast for her 10th birthday. It was a wonderful feast, and he invited all the good fairies from surrounding woodlands. Each fairy cast a different spell on the young princess. One spell made her sweet, and another spell made her very smart, and another sp spell made her pretty, but there was one particular fairy, a wicked fairy, who had not been invited to the feast. The wicked fairy grew <laughs> angry and cast a curse on the princess. <laughs> there is Sorry, sees this bow and zoom. Your manners will be frightful. You'll slurp up your soup. <laughs> the king was horrified. He immediately issued a proclamation to try to keep the curse against his daughter from coming true. The king, all spoons. Throughout the kingdom uh, must be destroyed at once. Citizens of the land, gather up any and all bowls. Take them to the royal dump immediately. From this point forward, soup is outlawed in my kingdom. No more clam chowder. No more chicken and stars. <gasps> hear me, hear me. By royal proclamation, there is to be no more soup. Oh, a few years later, the princess had her 16th birthday, and the king arranged a huge feast. Prince Charming, from a neighboring land, was to be the guest of honor. He was famous the world over for his fine breeding. The king had even hired a new cook, specifically for the occasion. <coughs> oh, I would like to say a few words to the lovely princess. If her manners are anything like my manners, <coughs> I am sure we will get along quite splendidly. The waiters began to serve the meal. To the king's horror, they set down bowls of soup. The king had completely forgotten to tell the new coop, cook that soup was forbidden <sighs> throughout the land. Um, I, I've never tasted such a delight before. What is this fine food? <laughs> oh, why, it's a soup, of a course. Oh no, it's soup. It's delicious. I've never tasted anything so delicious. <laughs> well, I never. I believe that I must be going at once. 
I have a previous engagement that completely slipped my mind. King, uh, thank you for a most charming evening. Your daughter is a uh, <clears throat> most interesting young lady. The king was furious that the feast had gone so badly. The wicked fairy's curse had taken hold. Slurping beauty had scared off Prince Charming with her terrible manners. Sure, Prince Charming was something of a snob, but what about the next young man who came to dinner? What if slurping beauty scared him off too? The king decided he would fire the new king, the new cook at once, but, but slurping beauty begged him not to until she had tasted every soup. She loved it. Please, Daddy, please, Daddy, don't fire the cook. Have him make more soup. I love soup. <laughs> the king could not deny his daughter, and so he began a period of slurping beauty, trying all the soups that she had missed out on on her childhood. Night after night, meal after meal, she tried different spoop, soups, split pea, chicken noodle, beef barley. She loved them all. And she <laughs> slurped them all. The old king was terribly upset. If his daughter kept having this way, she might never find a husband. It so happened that another prince was passing through the land. The king had no choice but to invite Prince Alarming to dinner. Soup was served as usual. The king expected that it was going to be a very embarrassing evening. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Oh, 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 well, I would like to tell a riddle uh, to the lovely princess. Uh, what did the flower say to the bee? Huh? Huh? Oh, buzz off! <laughs> Get it? Uh, buzz off! <laughs> <laughs> the princess began to laugh, and then oh, Prince Alarmy oh, began oh, to laugh, and he had a goofy, high-pitched oh, laugh that sounded like this. He are! He are! He are! He are! <laughs> oh, oh, uh, knock, knock. Who's there? Oh, 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 oh lettuce. Lettuce who? Oh, 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 lettuce alone. Oh, 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 get it? Oh, 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 lettuce alone. Oh, 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 slurping beauty laughed so hard that soup came out of her nose. Ah. That made Prince Alarming laugh even harder. Eeyore, Eeyore, Eeyore. <laughs> Sleeping Beauty didn't mind Prince Alarming's goofy laugh. In fact, she thought it was cute. Prince Alarming didn't mind the way Slurping Beauty ate her soup. Oh, she has a healthy appetite. He would say, always with a hearty laugh. Eeyore, Eeyore. <laughs> <laughs> and the two rather enjoyed one another's funny habits. They fell in love, and they lived happily ever after. <laughs> the end. <laughs> he or, he or, he well, or. folks, I think now it's time to say goodbye. Ooh. Yeah, it's time, now it's time to say goodbye. Say, say goodbye. goodbye. Say goodbye. Now it's, now it's time, time to say, say goodbye. goodbye. We'll, we'll see, see you all next week. Bye-bye. Thanks for coming. Thank you for coming.